Anna Rose is the founder of Everything ZK. So ZK Pod, oh. ZK Summit, ZK Validator, and ZK Hack. And Kobe um, is the head of research at Geometry um, and also works with Anna on ZK Validator and ZK Hack. And is also a cryptography advisor at C Lab. So lots of hats here. Before we, before we speak with Anna and Kobe about the state of the ZK ecosystem, um, let me tell you about our sponsors today. Our sponsor is Omni. Um, and Omni is your new favorite multi-chain mobile wallet. It supports more than 25 protocols, so you can manage all of your assets in one place across all major EVMs, layer twos, um, so ZK Sync and StarkNet are coming soon, and non-EVMs. But what's really special about Omni is that you can do all the most important things in Web3 directly within the wallet itself. Want to get yield? Omni allows you to get the best yield with zero fees in three taps, be it staking, liquid staking, lending, lending via Arbor, or um, vaults via Yarn. Need to exchange USDC on ETH to Atom on Cosmos? Omni aggregates all major bridges and DEXs, so you can bridge and swap, swap across all supported networks in one transaction directly from within your wallet. Love NFTs? Omni also offers uh, NFT support, so you can collect and manage your favorite NFTs across all chains in one place. And it's a super easy way uh, to use Web3, and more, most importantly, Omni is fully self-custodial, meaning you never have to trust anyone with your assets other than yourself. And if you want, you can even use Omni's ledger integration so all of your funds stay on your hardware wallet. Join tens of thousands of users in this next generation wallet by downloading it today on iOS or Android at omni.app. Fantastic. Hey, <laughs> it's so good to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming on so so uh, shortly before the holiday season mm -hmm. good to be here yeah fun to be on the other side <laughs> <laughs> it, it is crazy isn't it i was i was recently on um sebastian's podcast to talk about gnosis chain um and it's really funny because it's so different on the other side <laughs> uh, well yeah on my show actually yeah i've been on your show before like ages ago so um cool <laughs> Fantastic. So we're here to talk about the state of the ZK ecosystem because obviously it's been um, there's been a lot of changes over the last year or so, and it's been extremely difficult to kind of keep up. For me, as someone who does not pay attention to this full time, but maybe also for you guys, so maybe kind definitely of, <laughs> we need your help. But um, before we kind of dive into um, the ins and outs of the ZK ecosystem, um, let's get some. Background, background on both of you, and I'll start with Anna. All right. So, what, what, how far back should I go? <laughs> Maybe skip kindergarten. Okay, no kindergarten. Uh, okay, okay. So, I think I'll start the story with um, over ten years ago. I think, or almost ten years ago, I, I was uh, the founder of a Web two startup, and I was, you know, learning. I was working a lot with engineers at the time, but it was very web too. It was video. Uh, it was good, good experience, good education. And then come 2017, I sort of started to enter this like blockchain world. And it was really like going back to start. Like everything I'd learned in the previous tech phase, I sort of had to unlearn. And at the same time, like I wanted, I remember like 2017, I wanted to actually do a new project. I wanted like a second technical startup that I would that I would start but like right then um, at least the people that I was coming into contact they were working on like deep client software like it was like the deepest te most technical stuff and it was like yes there were some people pitching these ideas for like you know Denta coin or like yeah we'll use blockchain plus XYZ but it was so it was so kind of like phony to, to really get involved, you kind of needed to be like an engineer. You needed to be like deep in it. And so I was like, okay, I can't really be an engineer. I can't really even do product at this point. So what can I do? And somebody, I, so I joined Parity sort of for like a special project just to get a taste for what was going. And Frederick, who became my co-host, pitched this idea like, why don't we do a podcast? We're both new in the industry. We have a bit of a technical background. Why don't we do it? And so that's where... The ZK podcast starts 
And that's where, yeah, if, I think if anyone's listening and if they know anything about what I do. So I think that's where my work probably starts for them. But the ZK kind of uh, family kind of proliferated, or at least, yeah. I mean, you started with, with um, the ZK a podcast, but now you have uh, the ZK Summit and ZK Hack and ZK Validator, and they're all like um, in, independent but <laughs> interrelated kind of projects, right? Yeah, you also just, you introduced me just earlier as like the, you know, in charge of all things ZK. That is not true. There are so many projects <laughs> that start with ZK that I have nothing to do with. <laughs> um, and actually, I mean, I always love telling the story of like, why did we call it the Zero Knowledge Podcast? Like a lot of people ask me like, oh, did you work in cryptography before? I was like, absolutely not. I was around engineers a fair bit, but we, for the, like, and if anyone listens to the early episodes, like, I think until episode 11, we just referred to the podcast as like this podcast because we had no name. And we like floated some really like crappy, crappy names before that. And then someone kind of came around at some point and said, hey, why don't you call this? Like we know about this weird form of zero, like of, of cryptography over there. Like this, it's called zero knowledge. You have zero knowledge. Why don't you call your show zero knowledge? It was kind of a joke. We laughed That's a little. Very flattering. And we were, It was, it was a little bit of a you dig. Clearly, you clearly know <laughs> nothing about this. <laughs> Might as But well we thought, you know, be upfront yeah. about it. The thing is, we thought, why don't we do it? I mean, literally at the time, the only people who were listening were like the people in the room with us. So it really didn't matter <laughs> what we mm -hmm. called it. There was very low stakes. Um, but yeah, so we picked that name. And then around that time, I wanted to do an event in Berlin actually about So, like with some of the people I was meeting in the ecosystem. So I just wanted to throw a small blockchain event. But because the name of our show was Zero Knowledge, I called this event the Zero Knowledge Summit. <laughs> and then I shared that event with a bunch of people. It was like people could apply to talk and I shared it as far as and wide as I could. And it reached the ear of or the desk of Howard Wu over in California. And he got that, like, oh, there's a zero knowledge summit. This is awesome. And then he applied with like eight of his friends. And I, at the same time, had contacted Zuko and I did get Strad from, from, uh, Z, from the ECC now to come over. And so, even though it really just started as like this podcast summit, <laughs> but called Zero Knowledge Summit, it became by the time we actually had that event the first Zero Knowledge Summit. And I actually do get to claim first because there was an event called ZK Proofs uh, just a month later, but we were, I think, I, I, I'm pretty sure the first. Yeah. And then from then on, like I was doing this twice a year. So like the ZK Summit also just introduced me to new ZK topics, new ZK people, and that community grew. And at the same time, the podcast, like, It really, if, I mean, and I really don't recommend anyone listens to the early ones. They really suck, but like they really aren't very good. But um, I think we're only like around episode 21. That's where we actually first start mentioning zero knowledge tech. And we do like an intro to ZK. Um, but th from that point forward, as we were learning more about it. And so now we're talking like 2018, right? It's still really early in ZK. There's only, I don't know, maybe a hundred people in the world who know what this is really. So it's like, it was just was kind of lucky. Yeah. I'm really glad we picked that name. <laughs> and the last one you haven't talked about is ZK Validator. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, okay. ZK Validator. ZK Validator started in 2019. Uh, I met my co-founder Will and I had pitched him. I mean, I actually, it was on my show. I think it was the Bison Trails guys sort of pitched me on being a validator. They were like, you could be a validator too. And I'm like, really? Anyway, I pitched it to him and then we started. And there we started validating on Cosmos and then Polkadot, near, extended. And then, yeah, I mean, it was, this was super cool because it gave me, like, I still think, like, if you go back to that earlier part of the story, like, I have always wanted to be building something in this space, but it's been really hard or was really hard in 2017 to figure out what that was. And this validator role was like a really good way for us to start engaging in actually doing something like participating, adding value to what we're, what we're talking about. 
Um, and it was a great way to also be introduced into Cosmos and Polkadot and understand deeper. I mean, I kind of already knew Polkadot, but like these other ecosystems, what was happening, who are the players? Um, it definitely influenced like my thinking about the entire space. It probably changed a little bit like who I would have on as guests, what I was curious about. Um, yeah, and and that's where, well, and then ZKV has also developed. So we expanded past uh, just sort of Cosmos and Polkadot, and we actually started working with Kobe in 2020, or 2022 officially, but I know we yeah. started talking about it in 2021. Yeah, and like here, the, what, near the end, yeah. Yeah, well, what, what, what we hadn't been able to do before, because we had been really partnering with existing infrastructure providers before that, right? Like we worked with Bison Trails and Chorus One, and uh, but when we joined with, Force with Kobe, it was like we could actually start to be early on the networks and actually run the infrastructure ourselves and learn even more what was happening. And it's been really, really exciting. So that's CKV. <laughs> and this is also a super nice way to actually hand over to Kobe. Kobe, yes. uh, t t tell us about, you know, your part of, you know, the story, what happened so far before you met Anna and, you know, started working <laughs> on ZK validators with her. Sounds good. So I'll, I guess I'll also go 10 years back or something. Yeah, so, <laughs> as I said, skip kindergarten. Uh, yeah, but that, that's also like quite around the time where I got to professionally work on cryptography. So, you know, in I kindergarten. <laughs> 10 years ago, I was a bit older than that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but uh, yeah, so I, I like about 10 years ago, I think like I kind of had this opportunity in my master's degree to give a lecture about any topic that uh, that I wanted. And, you know, I heard about Bitcoin a few years before that. Like, I, 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 I heard about it in a podcast, actually, like the Security Now podcast, and how about how he was trying it out and how, how cool it is and how he was mining 50 Bitcoins on his personal computer, and that was cool. Um, but I never got into it, and, like, that's, like, when I got into it, like, back then and got to understand how it works that kind of what captured me but since then i left my job back then and started working on uh this space like i've done some products uh, in bitcoin like multi-sig wallets and things of that sort um but quickly after that i doubled down on cryptography because that was my favorite uh, topic um yeah, and like Going forward a few years, I also discovered the topic of snarks, which I really like, and um, was like looking uh, very deeply into Zcash and how things work there, because basically they were the only ones that deployed snarks back then. Like nobody else knew how to do that. And um, yeah, I was, I, was I, I led the development in. Uh, a startup that was doing snarks uh, for about two years, um, and uh, afterwards I joined C Labs, uh, leading the cryptography there. We were, we were doing very interesting things around uh, light clients with snarks, which uh, are starting to become more common now, actually. Um, also, we worked with Anna a bit there, like we can mm. share about it later. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's where I kind of got to, to even do more advanced cryptography and like create products from scratch and deploy them to users. Um, so around this topic of snarks, but also threshold cryptography, which is a topic that I also really like. And, uh, I was working with the Ethereum foundation a bit around this and, Jumping forward again, last year, about a year and a few months, we uh, started uh, geometry with uh, Tom. And that's the main thing that I do today, but also do ZK Hack and ZKV with Anna. And others, nice. actually. There's four of us on ZKV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we should mention our co-founders on that, which is Philip and Will. Um, yeah. So there's four of us who do it. Yeah, maybe Kobe, we just, you just sort of hinted at this thing. This, the, so the first project we worked on together was the Plumo Trusted Setup. Yeah. Um, 
And it was, I had been doing sort of a series on the show about trusted setups, like finding <laughs> out how everyone was doing these things. And like everyone had heard sort of the radio lab version. So that's the earliest one that Zcash did. But yeah. there was like advancements by the time we did it. And Plumo, this this ceremony, like Kobe, was it the first time that we did like that that parallelization or like the batching was happening? I think so. There were other forms of it that were happening. So Aztec was doing something that was also optimizing by pipelining. And so you, that you start that uh, subsequent contributions start before you verify the fully the previous ones. But in Plomo, we did do this out of order execution where people could contribute in parallel. Um, but if any of them fails, then this whole batch is like fails. Mm -hmm. um, but if they don't fail, then you get like 10x times better performance. So that was that was cool. I, I, I'm not sure anyone else is doing that today, um, especially because Plomo was a huge setup. Like it was more than like a few hours, like even more than 10 yeah, hours in some computers <laughs> for every participation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I took I took part in the Aztec one that you just referred to. Basically, you were you yeah. were given a slot, um, and you basically had to be online at that point, and basically you had to have like your your Docker image running, and basically it was yeah. it was very. Um, and mine happened to have mine was on I think mine was on Christmas. Um, oh. And so, <laughs> so clearly a few years back, I don't I don't remember when exactly it was. Um, but yeah, I remember kind of having to be there, you know, at the right time and kind of getting everything started and took a couple yeah. of hours and yeah, yeah. it was. Uh... I think Ign Ignite, that was the, the Aztec one. I think that was 2019, 2020. I yeah. got a t-shirt. I still wear it to bed every now and then. Oh, cool. Uh, so yeah, my, 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 my husband's always particularly excited when he gets to go to bed with, you know, like ceremony participant, which it says on the t-shirt. So it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> the number, which number participant no, you are? No, no. Uh, unfortunately, mm. there's no, there's, there's a private key on the back, but basically it's not yours. I mean, oh, there's okay. a key, but it's, it's all the same one, but uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Next. <clears throat> Next that would time. be a pretty intensive swag print, actually. If that would have been really one. That would be really, really nice. cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. So um, let's talk about um, the ecosystem as it is. Oh, Anna. Oh, wait, wait. There's one else? more thing that we haven't talked about, though. So I think we've both shared, like I did Podcast Summit. Kobe's done. Uh, Kobe, geometry? Yeah. Have we covered? Yeah, do you I'm, want to talk I'm, about geometry a little bit? Because you said I would that love you to. Yeah. Go for I it. really want to talk about zk hack. That's what. Yeah, I, mean. I, I do too. But let's let's talk about geometry a bit first. So, <laughs> yeah, we started geometry last year. Um, it's kind of a combination of a research house where we do many cool cryptography things that we try to um, show how to use new kind of constructions or protocols in a way that people may not may have not seen before and maybe inspire building new products around those. And, but also, it's uh, uh, we invest in companies that have this kind of deep research DNA within them. So um, there is a bunch of cryptography-related companies, some bridge-related companies, um, some of them around scaling, uh, some of them you know, touch other types. Uh, aspects of cryptography or others um, but yeah basically we, we like to talk about with all these founders that have something unique in their approach to how to build work products that utilize interesting research in it all right but, uh, can we talk much. zk hack now hmm? let's do it okay i want to so zk hack is like the project that for the last year at least i've been super excited about um, ZK Podcast is sort of general. ZK Summit is very much new research. ZK Validator is running validators on various networks and then using some of those funds to like do events and bring more ZK into the networks. ZK Hack, and this is something that came from, I guess, a brainstorm with you, Kobe. I had wanted to do a ZK Hackathon forever and it is happening. <laughs> it's still coming, but I've been wanting to do it forever. But it was like late 2021 and it was still too early 
to really get people together on such large scale. A lot of teams weren't sure. They weren't ready even. Like the tech wasn't quite ready. Yeah. Um, and so we were talking about this. It's like, I really wanted to do this hackathon. What could we do instead? And Kobe had this idea of doing a like CTF like competition where you'd break ZK protocols. You'd find a bug and you'd exploit it. And it would, and, and it was, it was like very, very challenging. And then around this, we designed this event called ZK hack, which is like, and we've now done it a couple times, but it's usually like a weekly or biweekly workshop series. So you have like every week a workshop or twice a week a workshop. And then during the sort of break between these workshops, there's a puzzle competition running. And we did the first one in 2021, kind of through ZK Validator actually. And it was seven weeks and it was super intense and it was <laughs> super good. Because what we found out yeah. is like you find out who are the experts in in these different teams like people you might not really know they are not necessarily at the events they're not necessarily presenting the papers some of them are but like but then they were hacking and you got to know their work and they, it was really exciting um it introduced i know both of us to a whole new group of people that we hadn't met before yeah definitely and, and at the same time you the, have the zk hacks oh well so so far we've done three i think we're going to try to do them twice a year so we just wrapped okay. one up we just wrapped up ZK Hack 3, which we decided to do four weeks this time, which was like probably a better, more sane amount of time to be running these events. Um, and we had three puzzles. And I think we had almost 30 hackers. So the thing is, the puzzles are really hard. So they're not like, everyone come. It's like only the most hardcore can really do them. At least the most stubborn. <laughs> yeah. But the, the workshops, I think we had over like 2,000 at least 2000 unique signups this time around for the workshops. So we like, these are the, the workshops are much more focused for people who are either beginner or beginner intermediate who want to use the tools. They want to learn how to like use noir or, you know, what exactly some of these architectures look like under the hood. So yeah, it was really fun. So seeing that they're like several weeks long, uh, I assume they're all online. It's like yes, there's a big playlist. Yeah. Super nice. And, and uh, there's the whiteboard sessions, right? That, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. We also started to create content around this. So we partnered with Polygon to do the ZK uh, whiteboard sessions, which are like, and it actually, and then we got Dan Bonet to do the first three. So it's like a mini ZK course and then a whiteboard session sort of inspired by the near whiteboard sessions. I always want to give them the shout out because like, yeah, we were really, we were like, that's awesome. Why don't we try doing it for ZK? Um, yeah. Super cool. How, how, how do people access this? This is all on the Zero Knowledge Podcast YouTube channel. So they can check Fantastic. that out. We, we, and there's all the playlists. To this in yeah. the show notes. <clears throat> Fantastic. Are you guys ready to talk about the state of the ecosystem? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Fantastic. So um, we, had the, we had our first Zero Knowledge episode seven years ago. <clears throat> wow. Uh, with um, Eli. Mm. Uh, basically, I think it was, uh, it was very, yeah, it was definitely, it was seven years ago. Um, and obviously back then, I mean, and the next couple of years, it wasn't all that difficult to kind of keep up with things that were happening yeah. because there weren't all that many, right? So basically, yeah. and even maybe like a year or a year and a half ago, basically there were like, there was StarkNet, there was Matter Labs with um, ZK Sync. Yeah. There was MS um, that's now part of uh, Polygon with um, the ZK EVM. Um, and then there was maybe Aztec and Tornado. But th in in the realm of kind of like ZK stuff, that was more or less it, right? Mm. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, there no was. Problem. So in. It's in like fall of 2019, there was this like flurry of papers. So around that time, there was like all these new ideas. But I think you're right that like the implementations, I mean, there was there weren't that many of them. There were maybe just like academic implementations. And those companies really came out during the bear market, the last bear market. Like, and I remember like some of the hackathons, like the ETH Global hackathons, that's where some of those teams actually formed for the first time. Like the they would have like done these little projects that sort of like tried to take some of this research and put it into practice and those formed the companies 
that you mentioned, but yeah, there was still only a handful as well. Yeah, and, and I think one, one thing that, you know, made it, made the change or like caused the change was the fact that the tooling developed a lot. You, back then, if you wanted to build something that is best, best on ZK, you had to take, let's say, ZK implementation and try to write your own smart contract or a contract that would verify it. And you would have to write your own like JavaScript implementation and compile it to WebAssembly or whatever. It was super complex. Mm. But around that time, like, and that actually came both from the Ethereum Foundation with Socrates, but also from the IDN3 team, which is now the Hermes team, right? Mm -hmm. And from Jordi, they created this CIRCOM environment. And those two made a big difference in terms of tooling because now you could build something that was end-to-end -end and you could have client implementations sprout from it and then a verifier on Ethereum. And it unlocked this ability for a lot of people to create ZK solutions. And I think that made a big change. Anna, you're nodding. You agree? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's... What I think a lot of people, when they thought of the idea of ZK stuff, they kind of, they did leap ahead to the use cases. And then as they started to like try to do those, yeah. they were like, oh, wait, there's like none of the stuff you need to do that at all. And so <laughs> it was like catching up with the dream over the last few years. And those toolkits are so key. Yeah. Um, and there's, there's new ones too that have come out since then. Like Yeah, the there is many, yeah. There's a ton. I mean, if you look at ZK DSLs, even there's just like we've done entire talks on that because there's a there's a map of the DSLs. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I actually, just is... gave a talk about it in like ZK Proof, and I, I had a list. I couldn't cover it all, even like wow. there's so many. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. The, I mean, it's it's also it's super exciting. And um, maybe let's talk about the OG, OGs that we just mentioned. Where where sure. where are they at now? So give us which one do you want us to start on? Um, may, maybe like any one of the layer twos in whichever order you want. So uh, oh. ZK Sync, StockX, uh, ZK EVM, uh, you know, Aztec to a certain. I mean, I think Tornado is the one that we have covered. Um, you know, to a large extent on this podcast before, but we we both had someone from Tornado on before uh, the recent events and afterwards mm -hmm. we had some lawyers on. So I think Tornado is probably way good on that. But uh, yeah, let's talk about StarkNet, Matalabs, uh, ZK EVM, Aztec. Well, I think we can say that like, if you look at Matter, I mean, they... A few years ago, they were like they were building, they were building a DSL. There was like a lot yeah. of the core research. So I actually had them on the show a ton then to talk about like circuits and exactly like that part. But then since then, I think like as far as I've seen, they've kind of gone heads down to implement and ship. So it there's a shift often. Like it's it is much more about delivery and it's a little bit less about experimentation. I mean, this is projecting, but this is what I sort of what I what I got from them. Um, and I don't know, Kobe, you can probably talk more about the stark net emergence. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that, um, stark net was, uh, what was a nice development, let's say from the starkware ecosystem, like before we had stark net, which I think started like end of last year, like August, something like this, if I remember correctly, I'm not sure. Um, before that, if you wanted to use the offering from Starkware, you basically had to partner with them and they would build with you this custom solution based on StarkX. And StarkNet was giving this ability to people to participate in a general purpose rollup. So that, that was a big change. Like that was a really major thing. Um, I, I think that back, then, back when StarkNet started, um, I didn't understand what it was like. I didn't understand the documentation, but when I tried it, I like it clicked. Then I got it, um, and the ecosystem there grew very rapidly. Um, there is a lot of there are a lot of people that are learning Cairo, which is the language that is running 
inside Starknet. Um, and it gives you a lot of flexibility and power. Um, I, st I still think there's a, a long way to go. Like mm -hmm. it's still not decentralized, like most of the L2s today. Um, like there are some failure modes that are not very pleasant, like things can get stuck. That's fine. Like still early days in some sense. Um, but it's a very welcome and necessary development to to give this power to to users that they didn't have before to run things at scale and applications that they couldn't run on L1. Um, so that, that was really cool. They were really, I mean, I think they were incredibly influential on the ZKVM team. I mean, the ZKVM teams, there's all these other ZKVM teams now. Yeah. And I think even like in the conceptualizing of this like super fast environment that's still connected to a blockchain, but you can like do a lot more, it inspired people to like be like, oh my God, I could do this kind of app or this kind of app. And it goes so much further than what you often could do on blockchain. Yeah. But um, yeah, I know that there's a number of different teams like approaching that problem, usually still using Starks actually, or, or yeah. features of Starks. Like they're using some mm. step that's Stark-like. Um, but yeah, you have over at Polygon, you have Maiden and you have Risk Zero, which I think kind of falls in that category as well. Yeah. What about... Um... Hermes and uh, the ZKVM. Does that, uh, is that is that kind of like, yeah, where is that at? Well, I mean, so ZKEVM, we just did a wrap up episode actually over on my show, and we talked about like the summer of ZKEVM announcements. Um, there was this funny week in July where like all the teams were like, we're doing ZKEVM, but I think. I mean, they all have different approaches. I think they do work together fairly well. I think there's like a friendliness in it. Um, yeah, I think they're trying to find a way to really scale Ethereum. I think that's a very Ethereum focused solution. It's like you can, you're, it's solidity. You don't have to change the workflow, the style. You can really redeploy things. And I think that we don't know yet if there's a winner or if they're just like a, these cool separate environments that all have their own unique benefits to using yeah i think it's it's actually kobe we were talking about this like do we know what phase they're really at like i think you can hmm. sort of do something with them but they're not necessarily like full on yeah I, I think like from like if we go even higher level we have like two major approaches to zk evm today like there was the one that um zk sync was taking and the one that starkware was taking which was called warp there that they say, you know, you don't need full compatibility. You just need to take Solidity programs, which is what people write, and compile them to some ZKVM. So some people also, you know, thought about what the term ZKEVM means. Like, is it compiling Solidity or is it running EVM Ethereum. code? Like, yeah. is, like there was this, uh, I think there is, still is this battle around this term. Um, but other kind of teams like uh, Scroll and Hermes and Polygon Zero, they're taking another approach, which is actually running the EVM bytecode directly, mm -hmm. and which is which ensures greater compatibility. So it's not like full compatibility still, because you know some things are more expensive when you run it in zk like hashes, so you have to sometimes modify gas costs. But maybe you can carry over some security analysis. Maybe you can carry over um, a lot of the more special functionality that you've developed. Maybe you've even written some EVM assembly code, so you can use that. Um, but yeah, I think that in the last few months, we've seen a bunch of them launching test nets, which is cool. So a lot of them are functional. Like you can use public testnet, you can use Hermes testnet, and all of them are at some, at an increasing level of compatibility, I think, each week. So you can run things, but sometimes not everything is proven, like not all the opcodes are supported. And so you will get the feeling of how is it to use it. So you, you have the appearance of a proof being created, 
but sometimes not everything is being actually proven. So it's more like sometimes a simulation of the experience. Um, but it's going it's like an honest simulation of the experience. Like this is what they aim that basically you can use every tool you uh, you have today and it will work as is. Um, but yeah, I think that that's the state where they are today. Like they're functional, they're usable, not maybe fully compatible. And nearly not, not at all audited. Like the or their audits are going to be very complex. Yeah, I, I we... want to talk about audits definitely later, just because it seems like yeah. it's such a fraud uh, thing that yeah that could go wrong. Kobe, Anna. didn't didn't they just? I think Jordy just shipped it off to audit, right? Yeah, so like I, like I think that they shipped it off to audit, and like I think Jordy has kind of been. Or like Jordi and the team, right? They've been, yeah, I think, yeah. kind of training auditors in some sense. Like they've been teaching them about oh, what it do means to audit that code. <laughs> Wild. Um, so yeah, the, I think things are starting to be audited. Mm -hmm. But uh, and that's yeah, that's Polygon Hermes. That's the exactly. project you had asked about, Frederica. So that's, I guess, the stage that that one's at. So yeah. so if you if you kind of zoom out. Uh, and kind of look at you know the landscape of all these different L2s. Um, I, I think kind of the the high school question, uh, you know, you, you know, your, your essay question would be like contrast and compare how they. I mean, so basically, if if I'm going to deploy on a zk layer two, how do I decide which one to deploy to? Ooh. How are they different from one another? <laughs> I think. Wait. Question for you, Kobe, but if you're writing Solidity code, would it look very different to you to deploy on any of the ZK EVMs? Depend, like if you're talking about like, let's say the Hermes and Squall variants, it would feel very similar. Like it would okay. feel, I think also similar to how you do it on Ethereum. You just need to change the RPC basically. And then you're but it also basically th those just kind of just uh, transliterate like opcode by opcode, right? So basically yeah. it's kind of like you, you just translate like word by word and then basically using the same grammar that you used before. You just, you know, yeah. put them one after the other. But that's different from, from, from say, Starknet and uh, ZK yeah. Sync, no? Yeah, exactly. They, there they just transpile Solidity into their own VM. So that becomes very, very different. The security analysis is very different. Um, there you have to audit the compiler from, from like this transpiler. That's what you have to focus on. And then also their VM. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very different. Yes. So, but let's maybe let's let's not talk about the audits now. So, I think we yeah. we we we're 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 all happy to agree that you know audits um, are important and difficult, and we will talk about them later. So, say everything is audited, and in principle, we know that it works as designed. How do these different layer tools differ from each other? Sorry, I'm 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 I just. Well, I think I, I, Kobe, you explained it, didn't you? It's this idea of are you transpiling or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, do you mean L twos in general, like, or just, just the ZK, ZK EVMs? No, just the ZK one. So, I mean, I totally get that. There's like uh, that. There's uh, th that. There are some that kind of uh, transpose them opcode by opcode, and some that don't. But other than that, kind of they they yeah. um, they arrive at the bytecode differently. Yeah. Um, do they have advantages and disadvantages? Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I think that uh, if you compare the ZK EVM ones, uh, I, I think that it remains to be seen. So we don't know yet. Basically, um, maybe some teams will go further in the decentralization efforts and they will do that earlier. Maybe they'll create some more interesting environments for validators or provers to participate in. And maybe some of them will have better performance. Although I think all of these teams are extremely strong and will reach adequate performance. Um, and maybe some of them will be more receptive to feedback or will do upgrades faster or have better bug bounties. So I'll be more confident that things are, are more secure there. But I think choosing a ZK EVM is really hard today. Mm -hmm. So okay, it's more about the team, there, is, yeah. well, there is one more difference maybe to mention. 
and maybe correct me if I'm wrong here, Kobe, but I think that mm. like on the Starkware side, it's all Starks under the hood, mm. where, like full Starks, the way that it was kind of originally presented. Whereas on, I know some of the other ZK EVMs, they're using like Fry, right? Like they're using mm. like, there's like one step that's sort of like Starkifying a snark, but it's quite a different thing under the hood. Yeah, I, I think that basically every team is taking another, a different approach. Um, so like you say, Starkware is doing Starks, like pure Starks with some additions. Um, the Hermes team, they're taking this kind of layer approach that you mentioned. So basically they're doing Plonk, but with Fry. So like they mm. use this transparent polynomial commitment that came from Starks, but they use it with Plonk. So that's interesting. And then they do snarks on top of that to optimize the verification. And the Scroll and Ethereum Foundation teams, what they are doing, they're doing plonk with this KZG uh, commitment, which is, it's a trusted setup, but it's, it's a universal one so that you can reuse it. And they're doing a very complex architecture of many circuits that interact with each other. And they, do kind of a recursive layer um, composition until they reach the EVM itself or the layer one itself where they verify it. Um, but just just as a side note, there is a very good write-up from uh, Ariel Gabizon that describes how you go from air to wraps, which wraps is kind of plonk. And it shows how similar Starks and Plonk with Fry are, oh. uh, which kind of bridges this gap, which, um, huh. which 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 shows how like that basically everything is very very similar. You just uh, latch on another thing, and then it becomes Plonk with Fry instead of Stark. So it's really cool. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Okay, if you if you got none of this, we will link to the <laughs> uh, to, to the paper that Kobe referred to in the I'm show sorry. notes. <laughs> um, so basically, maybe can I can I kind of um, summarize this with, um, in principle, all of these L twos do the same thing, and which one is best remains to be seen when they're live and operational, and some of them have failed or not failed, and you know, gone up in flames. For also, Ziki EVM, best. I think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's best by which by which uh, metric is probably also worth because there is that aspect of it being decentralized or not. Like you might actually exactly. suffer you might suffer some performance, but you'll get like a more secure system in a way. Yeah. But exactly. aren't all of them currently I mean, none of them actually have a decentralized sequencer, right? No. Not yet. So all of them have like a centralized choke point. So it doesn't really, I mean, if as, as long as you have like one centralized choke point, it doesn't really matter how many more centralized choke points you, you mm. add, right? Depends. It really depends because uh, if you have a centralized sequencer, then you can do so much damage. Like you can do all the damage. You can still, if the, if the L2 is designed correctly, you can still force the sequencer to take transactions in so they can't forcibly censor you. And they um, they can hurt liveness, but they cannot hurt security because the security is guaranteed by um, the proving, proving, proving process itself. So um, there's so much damage that this central choke point can do, which is... A really nice feature. That's what's really compelling about this kind of ZK rollups, because you can limit the damage that the centralized party can do. Um, yeah. So in 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 the on the scale of decentralization, where do all of these sit? Very early, all of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, but I think all of them uh, at least have the intentions, the right intentions, and I think they have dishonest intentions to do the right things, but it just, they need to ship what they have first and move towards decentralization later when things are functional, so. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, we all know that this is incredibly um, complex technology. So, um, yeah. yeah. 
Um, so so of that, we've, just one thing. So we talked a lot about L2s, but mostly ZK EVMs. Exactly. EVMs. But there yeah. is Aztec, which we haven't talked about, which we might want to yes. say a few words on. So like Aztec, first of all, just a team that I adore. I think they're such yeah. great people. <laughs> I love hanging out with them when I'm in London. And they created, they launched ZK Money, I think, in the last two years. Um they recently have like launched sort of a, I don't know if you call it competitor DSL to CIRCOM. What do you think, Kobe? Is I it? Think, I think it's, uh, same it's not level? a competitor. I mean, if you treat all the ZK DSLs, like all the languages as competitors, then sure. But I think mm -hmm. it brings something really new to the table. Uh, so I, I really like it. Yeah, I think that's, but they like, and they, they do talk about private computation, but I wouldn't put them in the category of ZK EVM. No, I think they're they're very different kind of structure. They're not a ZK EVM. They're not even a ZK EVM. Um, but and they they don't have this recursive power yet, like that would allow private smart contract structures. Um, but that's where this new language that Noir that they released is aimed to to, to enable that. So basically, it would write mm -hmm. the the circuits with Noir, which looks like a normal programming language, and then you would be able to deploy it inside their zk rollup. And that's why, like, they call it a zk zk rollup, so that you can verify within their zk rollup more zk. So that's what they do. Um, so that's what Noir would give them. But cool. basically, before we move on, just to make sure that we gave the right uh, picture, there are other L2s, right? Like there's StarkNet and there is, uh, um, like you say, ZK Sync, and all of them are not even EVM, like they're just VMs. And if you want to choose them, it might be for other reasons, right? Like you would choose them for the reasons that you're willing to learn a new language or a new environment. Um, and you want to enjoy this greater performance that this gives, um, mm. but you suffer from maybe other um, other other reasons because maybe you need to do new security analysis, maybe you need to train more developers, and you're taking a bet on a new VM. Maybe it won't be as expressive as you want because in the EVM you know what you can do and what you cannot. Maybe here you will find that you can do more, but maybe you'll find that you can do less. Mm -hmm. So there you just have to do some homework and maybe experiment and see whether it even fits your use case. So so how is how is the performance different if I go to uh, mm -hmm. no, sorry, Anna, go for it. I I think isn't it still I mean Kobe, can you answer that? Is is there clear metrics on these? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I think as a community, this is one of the things that we need to develop. Like I, I actually, I had a chat about this with Tom today. Like we need to develop some framework for benchmarks for all of these L2s. Like, so it's it's interesting like to do apples to apples comparisons here. Yeah, fair. absolutely. So basically if, 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 if you know I'm gonna build a, um, an app that I want to run on one of those L2s and basically it's going to need a shitload of compute or it, it'll <laughs> need lots of data availability and so on. And basically kind of having like this click through experience where basically it tells you, you should definitely uh, <laughs> deploy to StarkNet or something. So I think that would yeah. be uh, super interesting. Yeah. yeah. Or even some like common use cases and like create Oh, this this common use case on all of the different uh, L2s and just evaluate how how performant it is. That would also already be big progress, I think. Um, so <laughs> we've talked about um, L2s for a bit now. Let's talk about L1s. Yeah. It used to be that Zcash was the ZK L1 and everything else was sort of like building ZK on top of things. But since then, I mean, we have Ilio, we have Mina. So there's a lot of teams that are like, uh, also they're maybe in other ecosystems like Penumbra or Manta. Uh, yeah. 
let's talk about kind of where the L1s are at and what what their usage is uh, like and whether they're whether they're live at all or whether they're kind of in proof of concept stage because basically the mm. the um, the legacy privacy preserving L1s to me that would be Zcash yeah. and Monero um, and it's gotten a bit quiet around those but obviously the L1s that you just cited they've gotten um, a lot of press recently so wh where are they at yeah i mean may maybe just one thing about the zcash so monero i was never i've never really explored very much but i will say something about the zcash crew is like in terms of research they released halo 2 and it's being adopted by almost like like just all over the ecosystem so in terms of like yeah. output on research they're still really top in a way um yeah. But it's true that like, I think a lot of the other projects are bringing, because they're often at least exploring programmability or being able to deploy things on top of them and not just being money transfer. A lot of them are also proof of stake or they've like evolved the consensus to, to fit a little bit more of the narrative of today. Um, I think, so the one that went live, probably the earliest of that batch is Mina. They went live yeah. in 2021, I believe. And yeah, just side note, I'm an advisor to them. So just disclosure there. Um, but yeah, they have been, so they used to present this idea of snaps and this was like ZK apps on, uh, like on Mina, but they've rebranded that. So it's ZK apps now. And as far as I know, like there are, there's a cohort of people building things on Testnet now. Yeah. So like it's, if you want to start really playing with these things, it's, it's there to play with. It's maybe not yet live on the main net and I don't know what it's going to take to get there yet, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. That's part mm -hmm. of the reason why I think the ZK hackathon idea can come to fruition this year. Cause there is finally environments where people can really build stuff without like having studied this stuff for months and months and months in advance. And going on, I mean, okay, so Alio is, I know they're in like testnet three. I, Kobe, I don't know, have you tried it out? I don't know actually how much you can do yet. Well, I have i haven't tried the testnet three itself, but I've like dabbled with the tool chain that they have. Like they, they've, like Elio tried to develop a whole stack of things. So they developed a new language, they develop uh, this new blockchain that has programmability in ZK. And the, the language that they have is also very interesting because it combines both the blockchain part and the circuit part in the same syntax, which is really fun to see and really fun to, to work with. And so I've tried that and that that's really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, it's like, it, they also have like this concept of proof of succinct work, which is an interesting approach to, to mining because like they're kind of in a hybrid, I think right now with proof of stake and proof of work and, and like they use this part because the proof of work itself uses snarks. So they use this part to basically incentivize creating hardware accelerated snark provers mm -hmm. in some sense. So it's kind of a whole uh, circle. Uh, so it's, that might it's a be nice impressive. Ecosystem. Yeah. Yeah. We might want to mention actually. So the, the Alio team also like they put together the Z prize this year, which was an attempt to like push and fund hardware acceleration, which makes sense with their product. And yeah. I think the, re the results just came in. We did a little, Alex did a presentation at ZK Hack uh, last week. So yeah, there's like, I think, and from what I understood, like there were actual, there was progress made in hardware, like ZK proving. It's pretty cool that that worked, that it happened. Yeah. It's like industry wide. Yeah. ZKV partly sponsored it too. So like, yeah, we all got involved to try to push yeah. that. Yeah, I think like hardware acceleration, like the, the results maybe were surprising for some people and you got better than expected. And you actually got some interesting breakthroughs, like in even in things that we haven't seen progress in like decades. So, and people now that they see that the market is serious about paying them for hardware acceleration, they're now looking at this and actually making interesting breakthrough, breakthroughs. So that's really yeah. cool to see. There's also a few teams that have emerged, like projects that just work on ex like hardware too. Like yeah. Omer's project, whose name I always mess up. Ig Ingunyama. 
<laughs> Ingonyama. There we go. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. I should mention ZK Validators is an investor in a few of these projects, and I think Geometry might be as well. So Yeah, Geometry is an investor in, Ge in Ingonyama, yeah. There's other projects, like other L1s, but they live within the other ecosystem. So we have Penumbra that's like, it's going to be a privacy dex within the Cosmos ecosystem, like using IBC. Uh, you have a Noma, which I feel like sort of is in Cosmos, sort of is in Polkadot. It's like also this like bridged to other ecosystems project. And I know they're doing a trusted setup right now that's do going really well from what I could see. It's like a lot yeah. of people wanted to do it. Um, we both and participated. Then we have yeah, we both participated and ZKV participated. Uh, yeah. We also have on the Polkadot side, you have Manta that is like their ZK environment. And actually, I will say a little plug, like ZK Validator, we're actually doing a workshop series with them to use XCM with Moonbeam. So it's actually called Privacy and Moonbeam. And it's using Manta and Moonbeam. And it's cool because like, I think by putting the project out in the world, we sort of pushed the developers on both sides to make sure that we could like actually make exactly this combination this so so actually there will be applications building kind of over that uh through our workshop at least like experimental applications um yeah. but yeah yeah and like beyond the l1s that are let's say zk focused you also have more and more support in other l1s that are not generally zk focused but they add zk support so ethereum started with that like that that was a big, uh, big leap, but uh, Celo did that, and I think Swiss did that, and um, Falcon to some extent are using. Like I think they're also like maybe the biggest snark consumers at this point, um, maybe by like proving power. So you have this kind of deep zk integration in a lot of these other elements as well. 